Hello, my fellow movie fans, and welcome to the new adventures of A Feast of Films Theater with your hosts, Jesse Prosser and Ethan R. Hill. In Technicolor. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm really tired. Yes. But, like, I'm actually doing pretty good. Yep. How are you, Ryan? I'm pleasant. We have a new person on the podcast today. Yeah, we brought Ryan in. Hello. <laughs> Ryan, who are you? <laughs> and, uh... My name is Ryan, and I work with Jesse Lee. Wow. Wow. Yeah, That's amazing. wow. And today, we are here to... <laughs> so as you can probably tell from my mug here, and uh, obviously... Yes, but <laughs> gotta frame can, it as up. As you can tell, from as you can our tell mugs. from my mug. <laughs> um, well, uh, April twenty sixth, which of course everybody knows is Alien Day, was yes, last. Everybody. It's yes, national holiday. So I I figured it'd be fun to discuss the Alien movies on an episode, and then we didn't record enough uh, last week to do it for the actual day. So we're doing a late one. A happy belated Alien Day to everybody. And uh, we decided, as appropriate to talk about Alien, we'd bring an alien along with us. It's true. <laughs> Not an illegal alien. No. I don't know. Perfectly legal. Well, you I have my documents. You have your <laughs> Now. Uh, you can <laughs> see them? Uh, we need... Uh... But no, we were going <laughs> to... Because, yeah, we were going to, like, we were going to reference the fucking line from Aliens. It's like, yeah, <laughs> we said alien, and Ryan thought we said illegal alien. He signed up. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Rachel told us to make fun of you. For yeah, it, so, just uh, we we have the wife approval, so yes, all's good in the hood. Yeah, <laughs> all good. But yeah, so for you guys, like, because I will once I start talking, you guys won't be able to get a word in edgeflies. We can finally nap, right? Yeah. What was what was your guys' first experience with the Alien series? Spaceballs. Spaceballs. Spaceballs was my first <laughs> exposure to Alien. I mean, that's fair. It's a wonderful reference. Well, I mean, they got John Hurt in there and yeah, everything. Yeah, like, and I didn't get it. Like, I just thought it was, I just was like, oh, it's a Looney Tunes reference. Because <laughs> the alien pops out of his chest at the end and starts doing the singing and dancing. Hello, my lady, and I'm like, hello, my honey. I'm like, oh, this is clearly a Looney Tunes reference. Obviously. So I don't know what, like, and oh, him saying not again. This must happen to this guy all the time. Ha ha. <laughs> Zero <laughs> context. Then finally, years later, I watched Alien. And then I'm like, I've seen this before. <sighs> and slowly started to piece it together that it was a reference. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Spaceballs is the first time I was exposed to anything alien. Which is, which is, uh, I, I, I can accept that. That's it's more on, than fair. It's on brand for me. Oh, 100%. Mel Brooks. Yeah, Mel Brooks exposed me to alien. Thanks, Mel. <laughs> I know you're watching. How about yourself, Ryan? Do you recall? Uh, playing the Alien game on Sega Dreamcast. Oh shit! Okay, it was my first exposure to the Alien franchise. Oh that's, my god, that's a deep cut. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. With yep. the with the face huggers that would jump on the screen. Yep, it was terrifying. Oh, 100 yeah. percent, man. Like, was that like? Was it just Alien or was it Alien versus Predator? It was like, Alien. Okay, yeah. yeah. Now, was it Alien or Aliens? Yes, because it, it was Alien. <laughs> alien. It was, like, it was the yeah, first. Yeah. Okay, no, for sure. It's, fuck, there's so many, like... And there's a very clear distinction between, like, if you get, like, an Alien or an Aliens game, what kind of game you're getting. Because yeah. there's so many just, like... There, if it's Alien, it's 100% gonna be a horror game, but then yeah. there's, like, 10,000 Aliens it was, I, I played it recently, and it, was, it still holds up for the, like, the scare factor. 100%. Compared to Alien Isolation, how would you say it holds up? I liked Alien Isolation. I loved it. Like... I really enjoyed it. Aesthetically, they they captured the atmosphere so well. Yeah. And the score reflects, like, that Jerry Goldsmith sound so much. Like... My my biggest thing with that game is I still have it's a game I love that I still haven't finished because I get so stressed out yeah. from horror games. Yeah, it's a very scary game. A hundred percent. Like, any... I love the fact that the xenomorph just kind of you never know where it's going to come from. A hundred percent. It never regenerates in the same area. Yep. Well, and like it's not just that it's it's the fucking the androids which like I was like well the guns didn't work on the alien clearly I could shoot this android boy was I wrong. <laughs> You always know a working Joe. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. No, um, my biggest thing with that game, like, every time I hear a sound, it, like, it, again, the atmosphere is so yeah. thick that, like, 
immediately I just run into a locker and I hide forever. Yeah. It's like I haven't gotten that far in the game because I'm so jumpy. Yeah. So, so I it, tuned out trying to find... So, like, so is Dreamcast Alien game? Yeah, it was mm-hmm. on Dreamcast. Because the only thing that's coming up is uh, Alien Homefront or... It's, I'd, I'd need to see like a, a game... There's 100% game gotta be one. I distinctly I'm, remember Dreamcast. I know there's... um. I know on the Jaguar Quake? there's Quake. No, because yeah, Alien Front Online is the only thing that's popping no, up. No, not that. There's gotta be one. That's a. Uh... I a hundred. I actually like recently went through like a list of like old Alien games because there's like because the most recent one, Fire Team, came out, and which is really fun by the way. If anyone wants a really good like just action game, it's essentially Left for Dead w- with aliens. Yeah, and it's a lot of fun. Definitely designed around co-op, but, like, you can play it single-player all right in, like, normal difficulty. Sorry. Um, I... You should tell him about how uh, scared you got playing <laughs> Alien Isolation. Well, yes, because the first time I was playing it uh, was back in the old house when I lived in Red Deer. And, uh, of course, I wanted the full experience. So, like, I've, I've got, like, this corner of the basement where my TV is, so I got all the lights off. Perfect atmosphere for playing this game. And him and Trent kept trying to scare me. Like, deliberately, like, trying to sneak up on me and, like, scare the crap out of me. And I was like, I heard you coming. Like, just, what are you trying to prove? And then I'm playing the game. And then one of his friends, who just wanted to see what I was up to, just walked up, didn't hear at all. And he's like, how's the game? I'm like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> And from my memory, and we disagree on this, his TV was facing the hallway at that point. No, re- like, that was when it was facing you away. You were facing away. You were, I, you yeah, was, fa- I was facing away. Yeah, so, was, like, there's this whole hallway behind me, just pure darkness. So, like. And she just timidly walks up and is like, hey, how's it going? I was like, Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> um, so, that that was. It was a very effective game. I'm trying to- <laughs> I think that game did a very good job of capturing the atmosphere from the first movie. A hundred percent. Like it's... it, it feels like if like if we had gotten a movie that was more in line with the first movie as a sequel, that's what it would have been, as opposed yeah. to Aliens, where it goes more into like the action the territory. Action, yeah. and... I have it. I'm still. I still haven't played it because I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> You're not ready for that level of. Uh... I also need to get better at video games before I can uh, commit to ones where I don't have to do much. Well, that's the thing. I'm a run and gun type of guy, so... uh... When I appreciate that, like, it's a game where, again, like, every other game with Alien in it, you just, you you got all the guns and you just, you just shoot them in troves and it's like, whatever. One Alien, and yeah, you've got guns, doesn't do jack shit. There's nothing you can do. (laughs) Just hide and hope for the best. One, it was really cool, too. um, Did you play the DLC as well? No. It was, uh, it was really cool because they got all of the original, like, all the ones who were alive back, and they did missions based in the first movie. Yeah. So, like, they had, like, Yafit Kodo and John, like, not John Hurt, um, Sigourney Weaver. Like, they she, they got them all back to, like, revoice their roles, and they did, like, little missions yeah. based in the first Alien game. And you can actually choose which of the characters you want to play. So there's the one where you go into the vents and shit. That's it. Alien trilogy for Sega Saturn. Yeah, Sega uh, Saturn. No, Saturn. Sega Saturn. Oh, Ryan, your credibility has been shattered. Uh, <laughs> <can't tell> the <laughs> between the Thumbs most down. popular, the most popular video game consoles ever, the Sega consoles. <laughs> they're they're better than all Xboxes, PlayStation, Se- Sega Ta- Sega Ta- Sancho is rolling in his grave. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, right. There, wow. There's a deep cut for you, kids. <laughs> a lot of those. To bet on that. Yeah. yeah. You're no. the one who brought up the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one I never got around to playing, but I heard it was fantastic. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Because it's... Just going off the co- cover, I'm like, I, I want to play this. That looks amazing. Right? It's just the alien. And I guess that speaks to the design of the alien, but like... It's yeah. a really creepy score. Too. Yeah. No, 100%. Well, because again, in addition to trying to capture that alien style back then, you have like... Just like the, I think it was it thirty two bit at the time, or was it still eight bit? I can't remember. But like it's that that like eight bit style yeah. almost adds yeah. to the creepiness yeah. of it. Oh, like hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. No, my uh, my first ever 
foray into the Alien franchise was, funny enough, Alien 3. Oh, yeah? Yeah, my, uh, because, like, Alien vs. Predator was coming out, and I was like, oh, that looks amazing, because I had no context. I was 13. I was just like, aliens fighting each other? Wow! <laughs> so, I ended up, uh, my grandparents had a VHS of Alien 3, and I'm like, can I borrow this at 12 years old? And they're like, oh, sure, why not? So, took it home, and again, you go into Alien 3 with no context of the other movies, mm. and it just starts with people dying immediately. Yeah. It's just this horribly depressing film, which I've come to appreciate more over time. But, like, that was my first exposure to the series, and then, of course, watched Alien vs. Predator after that. So I kind of came to Alien and Predator around the same time. No, and I think AVP was what got, like, that was the first movie yeah. that I saw with it. Like, when all things considered, like, AVP name may not be, like, the greatest movie of all time. But it's not the worst. But it's, it's definitely not the worst. And it's accessible, like, again, being that it was PG-13 and not rated mm. R, it was kind of accessible to yeah. teens. Like, I could I could watch it, my parents never questioned that. They were yep. just like, oh, it's a PG-13 yeah, so, movie? Okay. Yeah, I saw, the, I saw that in the theater with my dad, and then my mom and my sister went to see The Village. <laughs> <laughs> Two drastically but similar movies. Drastically different it, but it's similar It's true. Movies. I, I remember when uh, watching Alien vs. Predator and then he takes his helmet off and Adrian Brody was underneath. <laughs> it's like, it's, wow. Actually, that, actually, that's kind of funny because Adrian Brody was in the third Predator movie. I didn't even think of that when I made that joke. But you did now. You're welcome, Internet. Um, <laughs> I appreciate that you explained that joke. You <laughs> now see the reason it's funny is because in the village. <laughs> now see Ryan, the reason that it's funny is that because Jesse said that the reason was because of the village and yes. movies and stuff. You see and Ryan, the reason. <laughs> I caught it. Okay, good, good. Um, we yeah. just want to make sure you're caught up. Yeah, but then yeah, like I, I got the VHSs for the. The first, like, yep, yeah, I got Alien, Alien 3, and then Alien Resurrection. I found VHSs of, like, secondhand. Mm. Watched those. You skipped Aliens? Yeah, I, Aliens was the last one I watched, weirdly enough. And, and arguably, it's ar arguably it's my favorite. I want to say, you've always bounced between Alien and Aliens as your favorite, but I feel 100%. like 100%. You... Well, that's the, the... It's marginal. That's the great debate at the end of the day, and, like, it's like... Not for me. <laughs> I know, not for you, like, and that's gonna Because be, I'm pretentious. It's gonna be worthy to discuss, but, like, um... But, like, between Alien and Aliens, it really just comes down to, do you like science fiction horror, or do you like science fiction action? And it really, for me, comes down to what mood am I in. That's like, fair. And that's what's great about it. It's like Terminator 1 and 2. It's like, like, kind of cyberpunk... 80s gritty slasher flick or slick updated like 90s action bombastic movie. 90s action movie that's yeah. terminator 1 2 they're both fucking awesome which one do i want to watch right now terminator 3 do i want <laughs> do i want to watch it talk to the hand <laughs> what was your first like movie alien movie that you watched then it was alien Alien was you the watch one? the first Alien. The first one first yeah. see he did it right yeah you <laughs> you started at the top and worked yeah. your way down yeah Big old crush on Sigourney Weaver when I was a kid. I mean, how could I you? Mean, yeah. How could you not? Yeah. Sigour After Ghostbusters. Yeah, I man. Had a huge crush on her. Hundred percent. Sigourney Weaver's awesome. She's amazing. She's amazing in that franchise. Yeah. Well, and it's like Ghostbusters or Alien or both. 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 <laughs> I mean, I, I, honestly, I can't think of a movie that I've seen a bad performance from her. Like, legitimately not. Yeah. Um, no, she's terrific in the fact that she carries all of those movies with her performances. Oh, she commands Absolutely. a room. Oh, she's amazing. Well, and like, again, she was nominated for an Oscar for Aliens. Like, she's so goddamn good. And that's like, that was for the theatrical cut, not including all the shit that's like in the special edition yeah. where it's like those really emotional scenes. Yeah. Like, so goddamn good. Like, I mean, I could only say it's so goddamn good so many times. That's the catchphrase of the day. Of course. But no, um... I'm really glad this isn't, like, uh, Pee-wee's Playhouse, because I would just get obnoxious. <laughs> the word of the day is so goddamn good! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> we got three Pee-wees here. <laughs> um, Pee-wees. <laughs> I'll see myself out. Okay. <laughs> dun -dun 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 <laughs> um, yeah, I know. So I guess, like, um... Yeah, with that first Alien film... Like, ultimately, it's, like, 
Alien Aliens, I would say, and maybe you guys would disagree with me on this, or maybe you'll agree, but they're probably two of the most influential films that have come out in, like, like, like for the time, as far as, like, their impact on, like, science fiction and just creature designs in general. Because, like, I can't, there's so many movies, like, B-tier or what have you, that, like, are either riffing off of a the first Alien, just plot-wise or what have you, and then Aliens... As far as, like, the action, like, the squad of Marines, all that shit. I think, I think a lot of movies, especially in the 80s, really informed stories, even till now. Like, like, to me, when I look at modern cinema, the 80s have been the most influential period in general. I would agree with that. Um, and I think, I think we're finally starting to kind of see that branch out a bit more. We're starting to see filmmakers start appreciate, like, start to show their appreciation for genres and mm -hmm. decades other than the 80s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I stand by this 90s nostalgia is going to be the next thing. Yeah. Oh, it is. Like, <laughs> I'm we're already myself. working on 90s nostalgia. It's yeah. true! It's, uh... <laughs> yep, we got that. They're, they're doing another Ninja Turtles reboot. Well, I guess that's more 80s another, still. Another, another? Another, another. <laughs> it's a reboot of the reboot? A reboot of the reboot of the sequel to the prequel to the halftime show. Yes. <laughs> I would love it if modern filmmakers would take a page out of the 80s where practical effects came back yeah and in, into a way instead of heavily relying on cgi 100 well, percent. because like you look at that first alien film and like aside from <laughs> aside from one it shot it feels so real 100 percent. yeah because like <laughs> the fucking the the happy birthday surprise shot because there's the scene, uh, like... Hug me! Yeah, the, the scene where, uh... Dallas. Yeah, uh, Tom Skerritt's in the fucking tunnels and all that. Yeah. Super intense scene, yeah. like, darkly lit, the atmosphere, the fucking, the... the beep, 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 yeah. Oh my god, Dallas! And then, like, the first time you watch it, yeah... It's it, terrifying. It's terrifying. But upon repeat watching, the alien just goes... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's like... Oh, oh. <laughs> It's like... <laughs> It's so good. I know. Yep. <laughs> Fuck. But like, regardless, that that would not be nearly as like that wouldn't be nearly as iconic or terrifying if it wasn't actually there with the actor, you know? Yeah. Well, I think like I think we're at a point, technologically speaking, where you can marry the two really seamlessly. Yeah, absolutely. And like I love motion capture, but I like I do find some drawbacks behind it. Mm -hmm. when the motion capture isn't fully there. Because yeah. I can say that, but like, Planet of the Apes, would I have liked to have seen practical makeup on that? Kind of, sort of, but the motion capture on that was breathtaking. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, um... But then Rick Baker's makeup in the 2004 one is phenomenal. Like, yes, like, the, the makeup in that movie is phenomenal. And yes. that's the only thing... That... The movie <laughs> isn't terrible. It's, it's okay. It is... <laughs> This is all right. When was the last time you watched it? It's it's been quite some time. Ryan, when was the last time you watched Mark Wahlberg's Planet of the Apes? After the, when it came out. <laughs> Can any of us? There's really a Planet say of how... Apes. Oh no! <laughs> a planet full of apes. You goddamn dirty apes. You damn dirty apes. <laughs> but the the makeup effects in that were. I... The, so you can do stuff practically that you can do in CG, but I also understand wanting to push it, especially when it comes to movement. Yeah. Like so, yeah. I get it. Well, cause like, um, but it's, I, agree I just love like, you. like the dripping ooze and stuff that comes off oh, the alien. Oh, 100%. Just... And CGI blood and ooze and slime never feels no, the same. It doesn't have the same no. weight. The way it catches the light and it just, yeah, like, it almost moves too fast. Yeah. Like... Yeah. Like, and it, it has this like unnatural shine that like, <laughs> sound really weird, but like real blood doesn't have that. Yeah. It has blood. a shine, but not. That exactly. Outside. Like, there's something more visceral about, like, seeing it on the creature, you know? Yeah. Now, how do you think the Xenomorph ranks in terms of creature? Like, in terms like, of scary as far as movie design? monsters go? Yeah. I, I mean, think like, it's pretty it, up there. It's 100% up there. Well, again, you got what's, some... What's a, what's a movie monster that you wouldn't want to meet more than the Xenomorph? I don't think there is one. And that's... <laughs> because, because the Xenomorph literally doesn't even care about its own self-preservation. It oh, just yeah. wants to kill. Yep, just wants to Whereas kill and preserve the species. It's not going to kill me. I'm 150 pounds. <laughs> I'm not a threat. I don't have a gun. I, I'm not a threat. But no, but the alien... The alien's just going to bite my face off. Yep. 100%. Well, 
even if you look at trying to kill the alien to defend yeah. yourself, no, the acid blood that's going to kill you. Yeah, like, like, like it's the literally mach- they like the, the, the movie came up with a creature that literally is just a complete absolute nightmare. Yeah, in every single scenario you could possibly be in, whether it's like bright daylight or like a dark alley like yeah, it's still I, fucking terrifying i didn't hate the idea of the aliens being manufactured just not by an android yeah, from yeah. earth but like but that makes sense that it's a perfect killing machine oh 100 like it would make sense that that creature was designed by something yeah and, and that like, was that was always the the idea because like with the um like you got the space jockey, which is also just an amazing fucking design from that original. All, film. all the designs on that original yeah. film are amazing, and that's where, like, in all honesty, a lot of the marine stuff is kind of what draws me back from the aliens, liking it as much as I would Alien. And see, because like, yeah. cause, like the design of like their the land cruisers and stuff like that, just it looks hokey to me. <laughs> it does, like, like <laughs> them when they're driving on the planet, it looks like a model. Like, I mean, it, to be. It, it was a model, but it the, looks like. But a they model. did they did build a practical one out of um like uh, those, like you know the things at airports that like kind yeah, of look yeah, yeah. the plane. Yeah. They built on top of one of those for a practical version mm-hmm. of that. I'm just um, saying that that's one of the re- that's one of the reasons I like Alien more than Aliens is just like the effects, the effects in Alien to me hold up better than Aliens. Which is fair. I think even uh, I read something recently where like James Cameron said like he would have preferred looking back on the movie shooting it more like the original alien because like the original alien shot anamorphic and like has that like soup that super crisp like stylistic thing going on to it and like the texture like especially on the blu-ray like you can really see like just how much detail there is in the world and aliens was shot uh like uh which called super 35 like full frame um with a uh, canon f like not can it be uh k35 lenses and it has this very distinctive grit to it because of the way it was shot because he was concerned about like the effects actually working a lot of the optical stuff because mm-hmm. trying to do anamorphic effects at the time apparently was a pain in the ass like somehow lucasfilm figured it out and like they were really concerned about because it because they found they figured out everything yes <laughs> but that was his big thing but ultimately I think that helps with the feel of the movie. Like, it does have more of a, a gritty kind of war movie feel yeah. to it. Well, and I think, I think you, descri- you described that to me, is, like, looking... You kind of have to look at Aliens like a Vietnam War film. Yes. Like, it's... Whereas the first one is just a straight-up... It's, it's a horror movie. It's a it's, survival it, film. It is yeah. a haunted house in space film. Yeah. yeah. And, mm-hmm. like... And I love the fact that they have those distinct feels. Mm-hmm. Well, even if you look at the, like, listen to the scores, like, Jerry Goldsmith's score in the first one is this, like, atmospheric, like, these droning sounds, these, like, like, it's a lot more, like, of an atmospheric score than anything else, and it really puts you into this, like, dark, cold universe, and then you get the aliens, and then you get the fuck James Military bomb, like, stop. Yeah, so good. <laughs> Alien is like two two thousand one Space Odyssey meets Dark Star. Yes, like that's yeah. Do we do we need to talk about Dark Star a little I bit? I think we should talk. About Dark Star. <laughs> Have you seen Dark Star? No, I haven't. So Dark Star was John Carpenter's like thesis film in college, which then turned into just his feature first feature film because like they started making it in college. And they didn't finish it until afterwards. Yeah, Rex, and so then basically, basically uh, uh, and like Dan O'Bannon, who wrote Aliens, worked on it with John. Oh Harper. right, yeah. Yep, and that's I've, the I've con- about it, yeah. that's the connection there. But like, basically, the, he like he wrote it, did a lot of the effects for it, things like that. But then, like, in order to get to feature length, they added this subplot involving an alien on the ship, and the alien design is essentially a beach ball with uh, duck feet. <laughs> And it's just, there's this whole section of just Dan O'Bannon, because he's one of the astronauts in it as well, chasing this alien throughout the ship. And it's like a weird proto-alien thing that they did, but more like on a comedic side. Oh my god. Yeah, like... I keep this... If you Google the alien from Dark Star... It looks like the, um... The uh, Jedi training thing from... Yeah, kinda, yeah. I, um... 
<laughs> I keep this on my phone to remind me of any of the creatures that I build when it's like, I don't think it's going to look that good. And it's like, they made a whole movie with this and <laughs> it works. It works. So, I mean. Yep. It's only out from there. Exactly. A hundred percent. But it's like, basically, yeah, Dan O'Bannon, after making that movie and like, it ended up being like, it described by them themselves, they're like, it ended up going from the most impressive student film to being the least impressive wide release. <laughs> but he said, like, that idea of, like, an alien hunting people in a spaceship, like, in a like in more of a dark horror movie type sense, would be an amazing fucking movie. And, right. and, and it was! And it was! <laughs> Give that man a cookie. Yeah, right? Dan O'Ban never gets enough credit. Well, especially now. So, like, I don't, I don't, I don't like bad mouthing people, obviously, but like, there's definitely like a lot of people who do not give Dan O'Bannon the credit for Alien that he deserves. A lot of people don't give Dan O'Bannon the credit for a lot of things that he did. Mm hmm. I mean, like, frick, man, Return of the Living Dead is a classic. Oh, yeah. I'll like, give a shit. It's so good. You've seen Return of the Living Dead? Absolutely. Well, of course, you're, you're, you're a punk guy. It's just, it's just one of those movies. Wait, you it's can, not a costume. It's real like, life. this is a costume. <laughs> So, respect. <laughs> um, but no, like, uh, and of course, like, H.R. Giger designing the creatures in it as well. I mean, like, they literally, like, he literally didn't have to re really redesign anything. They just took one of his paintings and said, that's, that's the mo that's the monster. And he's like, oh, I could, you know, I could change a couple things here. It's like, no, no, no that's, that's the monster. I love, I love how the, how the monster blends into its environment so well. Oh, like yeah. When you, when you rewatch it and it starts to move, and mm -hmm. you're like, oh, right. Well, and just then your eye focuses on where you know it's going to be, and you can, still can't tell. Yeah. That final scene. Um, where, where it's just, just in the pipes. Yeah. yeah. And it just folds out. Wicked. Yeah, 100%. Well, and it's so, like, it's such a brilliant thing to make it, like, this weird, like, biomechanical, like, yeah. bug-type thing, and it's just... Like, again, like you said, like, you, you don't have any goddamn clue what's going on in its head. It's just, it literally is just a killing machine. Yeah. Like, there's, I was watching Aliens, and I was trying to, like, what's, what's his motivation? It mm -hmm. doesn't have one uh, other yeah. than just to kill. Yeah. Like, that scene where it's in the, the plane. Mm -hmm. Kills the pilot. Yeah. Dies. Yep. There's no self-preservation there. Yeah. Which is terrifying. Like, the only time you get any sort of, like update to like how the alien operates is literally when the the queen is introduced and like you see it like commanding them it's like yeah. okay so there's something there yeah. but clearly it's like aside but it's still the same motivation yeah it's in the same way like again like in real life i mean they even describe in the movies like like an ant hive like you know bees man bees right. have hives whatever yeah. like, <laughs> so good um and something else that's cool about um yeah, the first alien as well is they had two, like in addition to H.R. Giger, they had uh, Ron Cobb, who's actually like went to, I think he like originally went for like designing vehicles, things like that, like more of an engineer designer. And they had him do the designs for all of the uh, human world. Yeah. So you had two very distinctive artists with two very different styles designing those different elements, which to me helps give it like basically makes the alien stuff feel way more alien mm -hmm. like i find sometimes well it's 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 interesting like the alien like the alien thing to me is just it feels organic mm -hmm. it is a hundred percent has just that more organic you... feel versus the blocky machines like it's on well, it's like you um similar to uh the thing when you when they go inside of the ship in the first movie and like it's all just like it looks like it's a ship, but it's, like, all looks like bones, and, like, there's, like, the smoke everywhere, like, and then you see the space jockey, and it's, like, you don't really, you can't really tell where, like, the creature begins, and, like, the chair yeah. ends, like, all that kind of stuff, where, like, and that's, like, that's all of H.R. Giger's work, is very, that biomechanical things merging into other things, and it's just, like, it just gives it a very creepy, distinctive feel. And, and somewhat sexual. Just, Not even somewhat. Somewhat? Yeah, it's, it's somewhat it's sexual. Overtly. <laughs> yeah. One might say that uh, one of them... Erotic. Yeah. One might say... Um, <laughs> I hope this doesn't awaken anything. In <laughs> <laughs> this is a gay movie. I'm out. <laughs> no, it's not. You've seen the face hugger. Let's... <laughs> 
Yeah, like, uh, actually, that's one of the things, um, like, Dan O'Bannon said when he was making the movie. It's just, like, there were so many movies that were coming out at the time that were, like, specifically, like, like, they would attack women and they'd be more, like, trying to make, like, they'd be things that would make more, like, women uncomfortable with the audience. He's just like, hm, you want to that? I'm going to make a movie that makes men uncomfortable. Yeah. Like it did. It made well, I mean it made ultimately made everybody. <laughs> but that's why it's so goddamn effective, is just like it's it's a very visceral fear, you know, that the alien produces and like that. In addition to the unknown and just like the way it's designed. So it's very creepy. I mean, it's a creature that literally like its first act before it's like created is murdering something. Yeah. Like it's 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 absolutely horrific. And and like I will agree to a certain extent that like after aliens the alien does become a little less like a little less threatening when they're just getting machine gunned over and over yeah but i think aliens also handles it very well where it's like yeah there's a lot of them dying but like there's still a lot of them coming coming, well just that that whole scene where like you don't see the soldiers dying really you just yeah like you just hear it and like the cameras are going off and all that and like like that's that's brilliant. Yep. Um, yeah. However, I do feel like the addition of um, more aliens does diminish the horror factor for me. Oh, of like, course. Like, aliens doesn't feel like a horror movie. It to feels me. like an action. Movie. Yeah. Because I know exactly when I'm going to see them. Right. Mm-hmm. Whereas the first alien, you had no idea when you were yeah. going to see. There's going to pop out. Or... Yeah. Because it's it's all very dark, so it's like it could be hiding in any yeah. corner. I'll just say it. I would love James Wan to direct an alien movie. Oh fuck! That'd be great. <laughs> I think I think his sensibility of tension building and not releasing until it's just the right moment yeah. mm-hmm. would fit like an alien movie perfectly. Hundred percent. Well, we're getting um, we're getting Fede Alvarez doing one next, which I'm. I feel like I feel like his is gonna. I mean, like I I actually never saw uh, Don't, Don't Breathe. So Don't I Breathe can't is speak good. To it, but I like going off of just Evil Dead, and I can't go off Evil Dead because it's Evil Dead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I feel like it, I, part of me is just like, I think it's going to be a bloodbath. Oh, like, absolutely. Um, but I, like, that's not what I want for, like, Alien needs to be gory, but it doesn't need to be a bloodbath, overly, if that yeah. makes well, sense. Well, like, right? and that's why, like, I mean, you do have to see Don't Breathe, but, like, that is a movie that very much, like, it is people trapped in a house with a killing machine. The killing machine happens to be Stephen Lang, of course. But, like, there's a lot of really good tension in that film of, like, how are they going to get out of this scenario? And, like, it's all in a house, but it's super tense. So, de- he definitely has it in him, but that movie definitely has, like, its moments where it's like, oh, Jesus Christ. Ugh. <laughs> it gets gross. In a delightful way. Very. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I'm, I'm on board. I'll see what happens. How do you, like, Alien 3. How does everyone feel? I know you like it, but like yes, yeah. creature design wise, all that kind of stuff. Do you prefer the dog? Do you prefer the bull? Oh, the um, yeah, because um, have you seen? I guess there's a question, right? Have you seen the um, the assembly cut of Alien Three? No. So what they ended up doing? It's not a director's cut because David Fincher has disowned Alien Three, and honestly, I don't blame him given. The, the ba- massive success he's had as a filmmaker yeah. since then. Well, not only that, but like he had like almost zero control over that film for the most part. Um, but uh, what um, the guys who did the the quadrilogy collection did, like the guy who put it together, essentially got permission to basically make the closest thing to Fincher's original vision of the film. Yeah, and there's a lot of stuff where it's like just like. The motivations of, like, a lot of the prisoners is a lot more clear. Yeah. Um, a lot of the thematic elements are a lot more clear within the story. There's a lot of restored dialogue. Like, for the the Blu-ray version, like, the DVD, they ended up using, like, what they had for audio. But then they actually got, like, a lot of the original actors to come back and, like, re-loop their lines for certain scenes so they could get crisper dialogue for it. Um, and then uh, there's, like, one weird little change. Because, like, in the theatrical cut the alien comes out of a dog. Yes. In the assembly cut, it comes out of an ox. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, I've never heard that before. And it's, um, and like, I, I remember like reading a thing where it's like thematically, like the ox is more significant to like what the story's trying to tell with like the religious tones and things like that than the dog is. But like, 
I can't remember why the dog ended up being the thing. Like, I, it's a bit more believable that there's a dog on the ship instead of an ox. That could be it, but it's like they're like kind it might of. Also, be more visceral too, because again, yeah. people people have a more a deep connection to a dog than yeah. a dog. that too. Yeah. So it's Did like you ever see the behind the scenes of the dog in the costume? Yes, it's so cute. <laughs> it's adorable. Greyhounds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the this little like, fucking dog in an alien costume, and it would run out of the room. <laughs> it's like. Yeah, I think they ended up using like for some shots, but then they did like a like a wire puppet for like yeah. and composited it. And the, the one thing I will say about Alien Three is there is a lot of not great CG compositing in yeah. it, but like and that fish eye lens. Oh boy, they and, love that fish eye lens. Yep, yep. For the the aliens eye view, it is just like eh, it, yeah, it works. It's not bad. It it's stylistically interesting at least. But do you guys like that concept of the alien taking over other? creatures oh absolutely and to me it is the biggest missed opportunity that they've had in the whole series because like i I've, I've talked about this before but like uh like alien vs predator requiem like the predalien so goddamn cool like that is, the, this is like to me like that's it's, okay it's a, it's not a good movie at all I, no. i'm not a fan for multiple reasons but like Getting able to actually like see the Pred Alien in live action, that was really cool, because up to that point it was literally just like a thing in the comics and the video games. So getting to see one in the movie, that was that was really cool. But like it always felt like why why not get crazy with it, you know? Like Imagine a bear. Oh yeah, like bear like I've seen so many cool like concept arts for like they've done like uh some just weird ones too. Yeah, like ape like great apes like and it's like this alien with like these like extended like orangutan right. arms and like i've seen ones the where shark it's one? the shark one yeah it's really doesn't, interesting doesn't make any sense but like but there's one where it's like <laughs> does, it, does it does it go to the mouth the gills like, how yeah is like this? What, are, what are we doing here um but it's um but the coolest one and i want them to do this either like in the show or this upcoming movie but it's like just just come up on a planet there's like some kind of giant bat creature and just give me an alien with wings just oh, yeah. just go for the and oh, like yeah. dragon looking yeah. alien thing like because the one thing that'd be more terrifying than alien is an alien that can fly like pitch black yes absolutely like give me give me that version of the alien because like there's uh the old kenner toys had um there was a flying queen alien oh really yeah and it's like that makes sense with the queen it's yeah. like why hasn't that been in a movie? How yeah. how fucking terrifying! Like this, like you get like uh, the scene with like the dropship flying in, suddenly the goddamn queen alien flies out of nowhere and takes it out. How cool would that be? Yeah. Oh, we didn't need that. We had a giant alien crawling on the outside of a ship. All right, yeah. Like, what, <laughs> now, how do? You, what do you think of the uh, human uh, hybrid from Resurrection? What are your views on that design? I love it. I hate it. I think it's hilarious. I hate the nose. Here, That's the thing. So, I love it for how terrible it is. Here's, he, so so he, here's the thing about Alien Resurrection. It is very weird. I mean, it's the director of Delicatessen. Yep. And and it it, it he's, is. He's a French director. Yep. I've, we've seen his other work, and it makes sense. When you see when you see what else he's done, it's like, oh. This film makes yeah. it's a mess, but and I like, get it. And in concept. The idea, especially with everything that goes on in that film, the concept of, like, the queen alien, like, doing this, like, like literally growing, like, human parts and then, like, giving birth, yeah. like, all that stuff's, like, weird and gross and feels very, like, in keeping with Alien. However, <laughs> the, fuck, the the puppy dog face and, like, the... the it's like ghost face, but, like, an alien. Like, it's just, it's so, like... Like, you get, like, it's, like, gross and weird and then, like, oddly, like, you get, it's, like, got these sympathetic facial features where it's, like, it's like oh, like, you feel empathy. It's, like, no, oh, oh, it's, weird. it's, it's weird. weird. And then they, like, did a thing where they gave it, and <laughs> they gave it a vagina and a penis. <laughs> and even the director was, like, that's too much, even for a Frenchman. Uh, <laughs> so they, that's too much. so they CG'd, they had to, like, CG it out in uh, post-production because they're like this is just gross this is gross and weird yeah no it's like just, i didn't like it at all no like and i love it because of how terrible it is like you know how like they're just bad things that you love yeah that's like, it's like, just so weird and so unsettling and i think 
honestly, as weird as it's gonna sound, this would fit in a like Del Toro film as a completely unrelated alien creature. Yes, he would make the face but better. It, yeah, the face would other be, than just a skull. Yeah, it'd be like the the pale man. But like yeah. the skull, the skull face kind of makes sense. Because, well, no, like, like it does. Like what's underneath the again? It's literally. I think it makes sense as a creature. It's not a great design, but it makes sense. Can you imagine yep. giving uh, Del Toro carte blanche on an alien movie? Oh my god, oh, it'd be gosh. so goddamn cool. <laughs> Like I'm, or, I'm still waiting for his uh, Lovecraft movie. Like yeah. he wants to do in the Mountains of Madness so badly. I'm just like, just fucking pay the man what he wants. Yeah. He's won an Oscar. He's earned yeah. it. Just I'm him. personally fine with him doing anything. Yeah, like at the end give of the day, him, give him money. Del Toro, just like look, let the man do what he wants. See now, just because of how much he hates this like creature design, I really just want to buy a figure of this creature <laughs> to have in our house at all times. Life size. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, just place just it a, around the house. A, to... There's a cardboard cow. <laughs> oh, jeez. I actually used to do that to not to you because I wasn't living with you that year, but I somehow ended up with a giant cardboard cutout of Ian Summerhalder from Vampire <laughs> Diaries. Diary. And so I would just hide it around the house. Well, of course. <laughs> um, to scare my roommates. Like, I think I put it in the shower once. <laughs> it, it, was just, it was just a great... Oh, no, he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in the house I was living in, yes, that would be quite shocking. There you go. Very shocking. Um... Yeah, no, so, like, yeah, Resurrection, I... Uh, yeah, it's... It's, it's a... I, that that is a movie that one hundred percent is like. But Ron Perlman. There are so Ron Perlman's great in everything. It's true. Yeah. Like I can't even come. Like obviously I'm not gonna complain. Ron Perlman's. It. It's a weird thing where like that movie is like. It there's so Brad many. Dura. Yes, Brad Dourif's great in everything. I he, it doesn't matter whether he's it. It could have been. Uh, Walmart. We know a writer. We know a writer. She's yeah. like. Uh, Walmart was in the movie. Walmart was. In, yeah. Oh, do you know about this? Allow me to allow me to hit you with a fun fact about the Alien universe. Um, in the special edition of Alien Resurrection, it is uh, canon within the universe because it takes place like two hundred years past Alien Three and all that. That canonically within the Alien universe, at some point, Whalen Yutani goes bankrupt and then is bought out by Walmart. And I love that. <laughs> and it's it's the dumbest thing. But it's completely on brand for Whalen Utani as a yeah. company. It's also completely on brand for again Alien Resurrection. Yes, that's like as I, a movie, it's just like yeah, this. That's why that creature design, as terrible as it is, is perfect. Yeah, it's the, just... the, the the Sigourney Weaver is scoring the basket. I know that is one. I hate that scene, but I but, love it because but, it's so like terrible. Like, it's it's dumb. However, it is incredibly fucking impressive that she did that like just in one take in one and take. just fucking got yeah. it. It's like. That, that's why she's the best. That's why she's Sigourney. Exactly. Because she's not human. Like, and apparently, like, Ron Perlman talked about the behind the scenes because he was there and, like, he they had a camera on him for that shot and he immediately broke character the second that they... So they have, like, this little blurb. Yeah. It's like, oh, shit. It's, like, kind of like they cut away. And it's just, like... Because if you saw that live, yeah. You, you wouldn't be able to... No, 100%. Her. Everyone would be like, oh, shit. Like... <laughs> Again, especially first take. Yeah, and like, literally everyone's like, there's no way they're going to believe she did that because it like pops out of frame for like a brief second. So it's like they had to like CG a little bit on the yeah. top of the frame to like make it look believable. But yeah, straight up, got it in one hit. So but it's like that movie is so weird because it's like a proto Firefly almost because like Joss yeah. Whedon wrote it. Um, and then like literally like he wrote the first draft and then they just like they did whatever the f they wanted with it but like with the like the space pirates and all that stuff like it feels like proto firefly and that is a concept like if you think about like the firefly crew in an alien movie that'd be really fucking cool yeah if it was executed very well yes so i don't know like i like as a movie it's hard for me to hate it because as you've pointed out before a lot of movies around that time had that feel. Like, oh a, yeah, it's a '97 Alien movie. It's yeah. on brand with the time period. Mm -hmm. Like, like you look at other movies that came out in franchises around that time. Like, I'm pretty sure that was around the time like Jason Goes to Hell came yeah. out, which is just a super weird fucking movie. Yeah, like, and it was just it was at that point they didn't really know what they were doing in horror, and it was just kind of this mad scramble to be like, well, clearly guys like action more now. So instead of just being straight up horror, we got to add. Mm -hmm. Weird, actiony, yeah. crazy. Let's shoot it on eight, like fifteen millimeter lenses the whole movie. <laughs> oh, 
oh man, let those color palettes. Let's just saturate. Let's just everything make. Let's just make it brown. Everything's brown. No, <laughs> that was everything was brown in Alien Three. That one was everything was green and there yeah, was but like, but and... was it like a steel mill? It's just fine. It's like, it's... Oh, it's fine in the movie you like. Yes, obviously. Um, yeah, but no, like Alien Three. It's like again, it was my first Alien film, so I do have like. No, I, and it's like I, I have a. I'll always have a bit of a bias, of course, because Alien 3 and all that, but, like... Yeah, you have a preference. I legitimately do think, like, the the assembly cut is a pretty damn good movie. It's still a terrible follow-up to Aliens, because it's like, oh, man, all our favorite characters, we got a little family unit now, everything's gonna be great, they're fucking dead. <laughs> hey, you like Hicks and Newt? Sorry. <laughs> That's why I was excited for, uh, when they were talking about Blomkamp doing, um, basically, like, they were gonna do a f***ing thing where it's like, oh yeah, Alien 3, Alien Resurrection didn't happen, this is the real follow-up, mm. Hicks and Newt are alive, and, like, Newt was gonna be, like, kind of, like, it was gonna be, like, the Pass the Torch type thing, Newt was gonna be the new protagonist, oh, yeah. all that. They, there's concept art of, like, Hicks with the burns and shit, and he yeah. looks so cool, like, and apparently, like, they were this close to doing it. And then Ridley Scott said no, because he thought it would confuse the audience to have two different alien movies in different parts of the timeline come out. Look at his name. Right? Like, how many goddamn MCU movies come out every year that are in different time periods in the TV shows? It's like, I think people could keep track. It would be fine. But no, can't do that. One of my biggest annoyances for when we we do prequels and stuff is how mm-hmm. the technology always seems far more advanced yep. than the prequels yep. oh yeah so, and then when you go back to the original alien movie and you see how rudimentary so the- ha so, i'm not alone thank you ryan we've so, been debating this for years i have a thing about this no you don't you have yes you i do have yes i do because the the fucking nostromo is a tugboat it's a goddamn tugboat and it's it would have it, it's dirty and gross the Prometheus is a multi-trillion dollar, hot top of the line, like, thing that would have all these different technologies. But from years before. S- yes, because it's Whalen's personal, it's the flagship. Uh, they hundred, got all- Hundreds of years before? How much, how much time? It's about, I think it's like, how many before Alien? It's like a 50 year gap or something like that. But it's like, like you um, look at like, uh... Uh, 20... I believe the original Alien is... 2091 mm-hmm. is when Prometheus came out. Yep, and, and I then... believe it's uh, 2135, I think, is Alien. Yeah. Uh, 2122. Damn, I was off by that much. So um, that's about... It's about a 30-year difference. Yes. So that's... But you look at the top of the line ship from like thirty Dude. years ago compared to a tugboat now is what I'm saying. We only we also don't know how old the Nostromo is, so it could be much older than the. Uh, <laughs> you're not buying this shit at all, no, are you? It's, it's, not at all. And it's not. That's it's, fine. I'll die on this hill. I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's not just the technology of, of the ship. Nostromo. It's the technology inside yeah. the ship and the design of everything. The, the holograms. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can just tell it's. No, it's it's, it's fine. And it's, 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 and that, that critique is not just to Alien. It's no, it's just. Like, I mean, like, like Wars, I mean, yeah. shit, man. Right. Yeah, you look at the prequels. Like everyone's like, ah, like everything sure looks pretty, uh, pretty nice and smooth and all that on Coruscant, and then. In Alien, uh, Alien, in um, A New Hope, thirty years later, and they justified where it's like, oh yeah, the you know the Empire just overhauled everything to give yeah. it a certain look. It's like in sure, thirty years, in thirty, yeah. sure. Dude, that's why I got excited when the Naboo Star- Starfighter came back. I just love that ship so much. I mean, Russia. <laughs> when they do, it's so cool. I mean, Russia still uses AK forty sevens, and those were made seventy years ago, like. They don't, you wouldn't change that much in 30 years. And that's what we're saying. Why would you go, technology would go backwards? Because in... it's the flagship of the Wayland Corporation and it has cool technology in it, is what I'm saying. No, I don't buy it. Listen, listen, I understand. I'm saying there's a specific aesthetic. I understand I'm in the minority on 
uh, my enjoyment of Prometheus. I understand. I actually really oh, like, I like Prometheus. Prometheus. Like, okay. Like, <laughs> I actually really like Prometheus. It's just that it's aspect fun. of it annoys yes. you. Okay. That's, I can, continuity. I, continuity. 100%. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Because like, no. even like the, the space suits, they, they were not the same, but they were similar. Like, well, yeah. they're, well, they're slicker. Again, it's like... They were uh, slicker, but they still had the same feel. Yeah. Whereas the ships were completely... Again, there was just too much fancy technology. Mm-hmm. I mean, like honestly, if you want to talk about Firefly, the Prometheus looks a lot like the fi- like the Firefly ship. Whereas, like, say what you will about Covenant and that stuff, those ship designs. Covenant has been more consistent with. It did feel yeah. more like Alien mm-hmm. because it essentially was it. Yeah. What? <laughs> Are you saying um, Alien was wholly unoriginal? <laughs> That's but, fine. It's but fine. no, like, but Prometheus, I think, was a really solid way to take that franchise, and I think they missed the opportunity because even like it's a wonderful first step in what could have been a great exploration of yeah. just the universe and like, and I know a lot of people are just go, I don't care about the space jockey. It's all that. I want to see the 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 dumb thing is there were the there was the people who were like, oh, I don't care about the space jockey. I want to see the alien. And then they do the movie with the alien. They're like, oh, why isn't this a follow-up to Prometheus? Why is the alien here? It's like, you people ruined it. <laughs> why did they run in a straight line? Oh, my God. Like, that's the thing. Like, that shit makes me so mad. It's just like, like, okay. I would have outrun that crashing ship because I know how to run better. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you get chased by a grizzly bear. Tell me if you remember the serpentine. <laughs> um, So, like, yeah, like, it's... The problems that I found with the criticisms of Prometheus, because it, it came out at peak internet dissecting the shit out of everything time. Mm-hmm. So a lot of stuff got dissected about Prometheus and it got mixed in with the, the criticisms. Because, like, it's not a perfect movie. I'll, I'll be the first to admit that. But, like, I appreciated how, like, just, like, for all intents and purposes, it's a fairly original science fiction film set within the Alien universe, but, like, they gave Ridley Scott so much money to make this movie, and, like, it looks gorgeous. Like, it's one of the best-looking science fiction movies, like, like in my opinion, of the last, like, two decades. Those yeah. massive sets they built, like, it's impressive shit. Great soundtrack. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. Oh, man, that, like, that opening track with, like, the primordial Earth and all that, like is so beautiful fucking michael fassbender's performance is amazing um like it just well he had a really great cast like numero pace idris elba freaking uh he was in it rafe spall yeah. um charlie's here charlie's there on um like an awesome cast yeah great score great effects but like narratively it definitely like it sometimes gets a bit too heady for its own good and part of that comes from them not wanting to do just a straight up prequel to Alien, and I can appreciate that because originally that's what it was going to be. The I think John Spates I think wrote the original draft, and it was more like that plan was LV four twenty six, and the ship was the space jockey ship, and like there was way more like overt alien type stuff in it. And then Damon Lindelof came in and said, "Well, what if we made it more lost like yeah. and made things unclear?" Um. And the studio is like, you said make it like Lost? Yes. yes. Yeah, and that's where like things get a little more um, unclear as ambiguous. far as... Yeah, the, the ambiguity goes way up. But like, a lot of that I kind of appreciate because like it felt a little more like when you watch that first Alien film and it's like, you don't know at all what is this, like, this alien thing that they're, they're interacting with and like what's happening with the space jockeys, things like that. There's a lot of cool, like, thematic stuff, and, like, there's a lot of little details within the story where it's, like, you can kind of tell what they're implying with the space jockeys. Like, the whole, like, the movie takes place at Christmas, relatively speaking, and then they talk about um, how, like, something happened with the engineers a thousand years ago, and, like, something happened that made them hate humanity, like little things yeah. here or there little where it's threads. like little things they're implying about like like religious connections and like how they're like implied to be like these gods that created humanity things like that and all that stuff i think is like really great and like maybe a lot of people weren't necessarily looking for that in an alien prequel but i appreciate them trying to do something a little more like 
different in ancient alien z and it gives the space jockeys a little more of that like lovecraftian like space entity thing mm -hmm. you know i Which, think that's part of the problem is they marketed it as an alien prequel yeah they yeah. could have just marketed it as its own well they film. got that sound and everything well exactly and i think it could have existed um as just a film that existed in the same universe yeah that happened to cross over and i think they relied too heavily on being like it's an alien movie so mm. when an alien doesn't show up everyone's pissed <laughs> yeah. exactly oh you got the 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 deacon alien there's a thing right there that's like Oh, I the want giant the alien. Face hugger. Look at the giant face hugger. You mean the body hugger? The, the, what is that? Yep, the, the trilobite. The walking um, vagina. The trilobite is what's uh, called even. Um, actually, here, here you go. Oh, thank you. I don't. I don't want to screw up my eyes. Yeah, too late. Uh, oh God, my eyes. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Your prescription is killer. He committed to that bit, and I will give him credit for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Um, but like, okay, like even design wise, though, how do you guys feel about the design of the engineers? Because like, I know there that was kind of a conflicting thing for a lot of people because they're expecting elephant-like creatures, right. or yeah, and then we just found out those were helmets. Those, yeah, yeah, and like, part of me is disappointed that we didn't get the big elephantine, like, big ass alien things. Well, because even if you look at like the size differentiation between the original alien and prometheus like it's very clear that the one alien like alien is much bigger um but then there's a whole thing and it's it will never it'll never be confirmed now because they're not gonna make that third prequel movie but like they were gonna it was gonna be like a retcon of a retcon where it's like oh they modeled their technology after these other aliens that are the yeah. real creators and it's like Okay, cool, but that's not in the movies at all. And it's like with uh, again talking about Alien Covenant. There's a whole thing in the um, there's a whole supplemental thing they released about like David in his lab, which like to be again Michael Fassbender, best part of Alien Covenant easily. He's great in both character roles he's in. Um, I, I love it when I pointed out to you their names and why you got because like so complete side note quickly he was um convinced that it was like an alphabet thing because mm -hmm. you had ash then you had bishop then you had call now you had david so this third android is gonna be an e name and that they and then it was walter <laughs> and he's like oh why walter and like you were racking your brains about why it, would they name him walter and then and you say, pointed no we were talking about the producers of the movies which are david guiler and, and walter, walter hill uh, and i'm like wait david and walter <laughs> What? God damn it! And yeah, he got really upset, and it's like, sorry, man. Well, what does that say about David Geiler and Walter Hill when you get to the flute scene? <laughs> I'll do the finger. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, hey, I can't disparage Walter Hill because I might be related. It's true. Uh, so I'm gonna be like, hey, Walt Walter Hill's an incredibly talented he's filmmaker. A great, yeah, great filmmaker. Yeah, and uh, four if, years. If he's related to me, he should come find me and give me money. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> like Hagrid shows up at your door. <laughs> Yes. You're a producer, Ethan. <laughs> a what? A what? <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. my 11th birthday again. <laughs> For like the third time. Oh my god. Um, but, but no, like, anyway, go ahead and continue your... Yeah, with, um... Oh god. But it's like in, um... Uh, his in... performance is Walter and David. Michael yeah. Fassbender. Yeah, yeah. Both fantastic, very distinctive characters. Yeah. And, like, they have the whole thing. Like, you've seen Covenant, I'm assuming? Yes. Yes. Uh, well, first of all, what did you think of Covenant? It was all right. Yeah, okay. Um, sitting next to him in the theater was one of the greatest experiences ever because I felt the shift. Because well, he, he was on board and with it for, like, the first two acts. He was like, oh, this is so great. Oh, this is awesome. Oh, this they're, is... they're doing the thing. And okay, I'm David on board. David shows up and his lab shows up and just, like, the energy shifted into this whole pit of yeah. despair uh, it and anger. <laughs> it was the like I just I don't know why they thought that was a great option. And it's again, I'm like I'm thinking like, well, you know, maybe you know, maybe David you know, found something and he's just recreating the alien. You know, maybe maybe that's still thing. It really sounds like nope, David made the alien. It's like, yeah, 
Oh, great. I'm so glad that this uh, cosmic horror was created by uh, an android 30 years before the original Alien. I'm just it, so glad. It, <laughs> it's kind of egotistical at the end of the day because it's saying that this, again, like what you said, this great cosmic horror originated from Earth. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, we're responsible Which for Which would our... be, be way more scary if we didn't. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. The... Like the outer rim of space. Well, that's the thing. It's like you have the clearly. It's the, the again. I talked about in the mountains of madness, where it's like the aliens in the in the mountains of madness created the uh, Shogoths, which were like uh, like basically a working race for them, and then they uprose and destroyed them. And it's like clearly that's that's clearly the setup of the the space jockeys and the alien. That's a very clear setup. They made these weapons, and then like it ultimately destroyed them. That's the clear setup, but no, apparently... David a, just wipes them out easily. Yep, yep, David destroys all the engineers, and then he gets bored, and he makes the alien. Mm-hmm. And From that, dissecting uh, Shaw. Bugs, and, and, and is, yep, yep, just Shaw. Oh, I, I'm just so glad we set up Shaw's motivation of, like, wanting to, like, find the answers of what the engineers wanted. At the end of, nah, she's dead. She's dead. She just, just died. dead. <laughs> yep. Thanks. Didn't make it. Didn't make it. Dead. Thanks, Ridley Scott. Um. <laughs> no, but if Ridley Scott wheeled up a pile of money to you, absolutely. Alien I've... Covenant was amazing. I still love you, Ridley. Blade Runner's amazing. Um. <laughs> but <laughs> he's never gonna watch this. I mean, maybe, maybe, some, maybe someday, maybe someday. We'll have to edit this out. Anyway. Um. But no, it's like, I'm just not, like, I'm not on board with that idea. But like, oh, what I was getting to, in the novelization of Covenant, they make it clear, like, oh, a- uh, David found this egg and he was studying, he was trying to recreate it. It's like, okay, cool. That's not in the movie. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to canon, ultimately, when it comes to a film series, that's the thing that matters. So like, at this point in time, that's the continuity. David yeah. made the aliens. So like... And it just makes it less interesting. Yeah, and I can and I can ignore it, obviously. It's like again with uh like Metachlorians being connected to the force. It's like it makes it takes away the mysticism from that thing yeah. when you try to like ground it, you know? So it's just too easy. Too easy. It's too to, easy, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Like I don't like I just, like if a, like again, Daily Covenant, wonderfully shot. It's got some great performances in it. But then, like, the third act to me just completely devolves into, all right, we have to make an Alien movie. And then they just completely recreate the original Alien in, like, ten minutes. Yeah. So, that's... Well, to the point where it just shows up in the cargo bay. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it got kind of ridiculous. And they blow it out the airlock. Yeah. And... Oh, I've seen that one before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> that's, it's like, a staple now. Um, I sure, like... <laughs> Like, I think Alien... Yeah, Aliens is the only one where the alien does not uh, get blown out in air... Oh, no! Nope! Told, no, Alien 3 is the only one. <laughs> it gets uh, put in the lead and yeah. it blows up. I Which mean, is the other thing. When Alien Resurrection comes around <laughs> and they've got Ridley's DNA, how? Ridley's DNA? <laughs> yeah, Ridley Scott's DNA. Oh, no, right, sorry. <laughs> it's Ripley. Yeah. This just, DNA. Just, just, Honest, I've made the same thing. Cause... They, they go, it's like, oh, we finally perfected our clone. Oh, it's Ridley, it's Ridley Scott, Scott again. <laughs> do, you know, <laughs> Scott. do you know how I remember that it's Ripley? Mm. Ripley's Believe It or Not. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's not related. There's yeah. no correlation between there, but I'm thinking alien, and it's like, oh, yeah, Ripley's Believe It or Not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's totally... Yeah. Obviously, those are connected... <laughs> in my brain but she she jumps into vat of molten metal i want to say they're saying that there's they, they had the dna from when she was when, uh, picked up in the beginning of aliens okay like there's that and also like they did like uh there's the doctor on the prison that also like did some tests on her for diseases and shit like that so it's like implied that that's where they got the dna but it's like but literally if you like they again it's such a swear uh, in the prison, like they, oh, in the prison. So yeah, basically, there's there's a couple sources. Is what you're saying? Yeah, like, but it's like, how? Well, that's another thing where it's like, how? Like, it, you get so desperate to make the alien again that you just stop searching the galaxy. Like, what happened in those two hundred years where it's like, well, clearly this is the easiest solution. Yeah, we're gonna just find this old DNA and yeah. try to and like, bring her back. yeah, it's like, uh, okay. 
that's why I'm curious, like, if they continue... Because I'd love to see more stories told, like, in that time period, like, after Alien 3, mm -hmm. where it's, like, the company's still... Because that's where most of the video games take place. Like, the Universe Predator and all that. Yeah. Most of it's post-Alien 3. Most of the books, post-Alien 3. And it's, like... I want to know all the, like... Why it came to having to clone Ripley to get the alien back? Like, yeah. what was the what was the series of events that happened where it's like, yep, can't find the xenomorphs anywhere. Yeah. Well, but if you think about it, every time they do find the xenomorph, they end up having to kill it. Well, of course. So imagine basically they've accidentally committed this genocide of this creature trying to catch it. They've mm -hmm. they've hunted it into extinction, basically. Yeah. Well, and that's why there's, like, there's interesting stories to be told with that. And, like, I'm hoping in this, like, new era of Alien that's coming around, those are the kind of stories we start getting is, like... I want the big game hunter from uh, Jurassic War, or Jurassic Park 2... Yes! Uh, to, ...to try and get an alien. That's yeah. the movie I want to see. I mean... Like, the exact same character. Like, not even, like, just, just similar. Just I just want to take him <laughs> and put him in an alien movie. Well, like, people, like, yeah, like, this is, all I care about is getting the Queen's skull. Other than that, you're on your own. <laughs> exactly, yes. Perfection. I just need that as a movie. But it's like, we, obviously, uh, I mean, I, funny enough, I um, uh, can't remember the actor's name, but he's in Alien 3. Like, the guy who plays Muldoon. Yeah. Yep, he's in Alien 3 as well. No, um, not that big game hunter, in Lost World. In Lost World? Yes, I know, in Lost World. Muldoon is the guy in the first Oh, sorry, movie. not Muldoon. Uh, I can't remember his name. But he's the best part of that movie. Because, in all honesty, as much as uh, Lost World is great, it's not the most memorable Jurassic Park was it the, movie. No, it's the dude that was in James and the Giant Peach, right? <laughs> yes. Yes? I'm... Yeah. He's the one that gave James the worms. Oh, right. <laughs> I have a, Vince Vaughn. I have a thought of James and the Giant's... Uh, Pete Postlewaid. Yeah, that's Pete it. Pete Postlewaid, yeah. He, Br brilliant actor. Pa um, passed away yeah. about... 11 years ago. Yeah, but fuck, he's so good. And but take that character. Yep. And, uh, People were saying they should have put him in uh, Predators. Like, just a, just throw a big game hunter into the mix of like, oh, the hunters become the hunted. No, 110%. Like, there's so many things you can do with stories like that that mm -hmm. are just fascinating. But that's where I love the fact they even put it in Jurassic Park. Like, yeah. I think that made perfect sense. Like, Well, and like, there's this really cool concept um... In the Alien... They've done it in the Alien books in the comics. And I'd love to see it done in one of the movies. Where, like... Basically... Because, obviously, like, the androids in the universe... It's literally just... They... they it's a... Just... They're, they're, they look like people just because for comfort level and all that. It's like an AI and all that stuff. In the Alien comics on multiple occasions... They have made androids that look like xenomorphs. Mm -hmm. But they talk like they're a person. Right. Like, I'm trying to remember one of the characters' names, but literally, like, they designed this thing because, um, the alien Queen Shelly in the universe essentially can operate like an aphrodisiac, and these guys were going to try and steal some from a hive, so they made an alien android, like, it was like a doctor that was doing this, and, like, designed an, a an android that looks like an alien, and it's, like, best friend is this golden retriever, and it's, like, this friendly alien with an English accent. And I'm like, I want that character in an alien movie so badly. <laughs> it's such a fun concept. And, like, I think, like, I, I get why they don't do that stuff, because it's easier to put that stuff in a book or a comic than it yeah. is to of invest course. the money yeah. into a movie. But at the same time, I want those risks to start being taken again. Like I want weird, I like that. That's why I'm down with Alien Resurrection and the Newborn because like I want weird. I want weird in film again, and I'd love to see cinema return to that because there's a lot of stuff in in movies now where things are weird, but it's not really weird. It's just the movie addresses the fact that it's weird, and that's yeah. where you're supposed to think. That it is, it's the same thing with a lot of jokes in movies now. Yeah. By pointing out that a joke is a joke, now that's the joke. And it's mm -hmm. just kind of... I don't know. I'm, I'm over that. I just would like stuff to get back to, like... I don't know. Taking chances. Just yeah. well, take again, chances, make mistakes, and get messy. Well, again, we need like, to magic school bus this. Exactly. Um, but it's like, I mean, shit, man. We've been watching Moon Knight and, like, how, how just fucking weirded out there is that show being by comparison to some of the other stuff they've done mm -hmm. so like mm -hmm. 
I think we're slowly getting there, and I think audiences are ready for just weird shit again. So, hopefully we start getting it. See what happens. I'd like to see another Alien vs. Predator, but, like, off-world. Like an, yes. Like an yes. planet. A desolate planet. I don't know why they decided to set either of them on Earth. Yeah. Like, no. the first one, I can kind of give a pass to, because, oh, Antarctica. It's Antarctica or Arctic? Yeah, Antarctica, yeah. yeah. So it's like, oh, it's kind of an alien world on our world. Yeah. But then to set the second one in, in small it's town U.S. Colorado, <laughs> Alien vs. Predator. Yeah. We left the lighting kit at home. Because <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be cool if, if they set it on an off world and introduced different creatures mm-hmm. you know, and the predators there. Well, hundred percent. Well, like, and that's literally like the first, like the first Alien, the first Predator comic book would work so fucking well as a movie because literally it's like this like farming planet just gets like the Predators seed the planet with alien eggs the cattle start dying off and all this stuff. They give it like a couple days for there to be xenomorphs Mm -hmm. and then they land on the planet and then it becomes this like three way war between like aliens and people. And they like that plot point of like the predator teaming up with a human directly from that comic book. So like I, there's so many cool opportune stories and like, it's literally like take aliens, add the predator. Yeah. Like obviously it's a little more complicated than that, but like, it's such a simple idea for a formula. Like, there isn't a single Alien vs. Predator game that's, like, not entertaining and, yeah. like, yeah. fun. And they've got good stories to them. Yeah. So, like, you can 100% do it. Say on Earth, I don't, like, it just, it immediately limits you. Yeah. And it also just raises a lot of questions, because it's like, I guess the aliens were just on Earth the, the whole, whole time. time. That's okay, I guess. Um, Didn't they want to add it? At least one alien to predators. Uh, there's rumors that yeah, like one of the creatures that they like wanted to drop on the planet was the alien, and then like at the time because alien alien versus predator requiem was a flop, they're like yeah, no, leave the but like keep them separated. But it's the same studio; they own the rights. But people would be like, oh no, this uh, gotta keep them keep them separated. And like I can understand that after requiem, like wanting to like kind of keep the two away from each mm-hmm. other. But that's I, that bugs me because again they're not taking ownership of like why the movie flopped. They're blaming the franchise. Yeah, it's like well clearly nobody wants to see the alien versus uh, alien and predator fight. No, no, we do. We, We'd like we to very see much it. would like to see it. I couldn't see it in Requiem. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like, but you have to like the fights in AVP, like the first one. Yeah, they're fun. Like they're very early two thousand. I mean, it's Paul. Slow-mo it's a Paul. And... It's a Paul Anderson movie. So like, there's a lot of slow mo and all that kind of stuff. But like. It delivers where it needs to deliver. The alien and the predator fought each other. Yeah, all like, the predators were distinct, different characters. Oh, and the designs are cool. I'm not a huge fan of like how bulky they are. Yeah, like, they're but, not as sleek as the. the yeah, because like they're because they're supposed to be like these like you know these quick like agile hunters and all that, and they kind of just look like quarterbacks. Yeah, and that's the one thing that like again I'll give the alien Re- uh, alien versus predator requiem is like the predator design is immensely better and it feel like best character in the movie really yeah. had the most depth um i feel like you're really really uh hurt i i have this. my it's basically hey we got this script for a dawson's creek reboot <laughs> oh <laughs> oh no i dropped it into my slasher movie script oh no uh, i guess i gotta rewrite this now oh i'm just gonna make an alien versus predator movie that's literally what it feels like is like I know teen drama is what I'm looking for in my <laughs> Alien vs Predator movie. <laughs> it's like, good lord! Like, like it, it's fine. It's it's it's. That, uh... Did you guys like the new Predator movie? Uh, which one? Um, the the, the, the oh, most recent one. The Predator. The Predator. I tell you what. Um, I liked about eighty percent of it. I think. Yes, I, in the way that I like the like weird cheesy 90s comic books i get some enjoyment in that regard but as far as like what i was expecting out of shane black directing a predator movie i was kind sorely of disappointed. yes well especially after coming off the nice guys which is just yeah. like a like Great a perfect movie. fucking movie in my opinion and then it was like oh man shane black's doing a predator movie sign me up and yeah. then i was like well wow now say why would the predators want autism um, yeah. <laughs> is a thing. It's like that was the wow. That I was hate the weird when choice. kids are in <laughs> like, bars. and it's like, and like again, like uh, Jacob Tremblay, great actor. Like he's a great kid actor, but it's like 
that was such a weird choice. Choice for a character. A weird choice, and just in general, it's just like, oh man, like I would like it's like, oh fuck, Thomas Jane's in a Predator movie, cool. But then they just they gave him the most like generic version of Tourette's, where it, it's like it's like. Like when you find out like Tourette's is when you're a kid and you're like, oh, just, just people swear it. I guess they swear all they want. It's just like, no, no, that's not what it really is. It's like, it's like they, they were, they were cartoons. Yeah. They were the cartoon versions of like PTSD soldiers. And it's like, it's like, I, I don't, I hesitate to say it's an offensive portrayal of that, but like, I get what they're trying to do with the characters and then, like, there was the whole running joke where it's just like, ah, oh, we call them predators. Like, ah, oh, but the predators, like, a, like they're more like hunters because they're sport hunters. It's like, just basically say the name predator is a dumb name, and it's just like, oh, oh, great. I'm so, I'm so happy they're they're making fun of the series they're making. It's like, but that's part of that humor I was talking about. Where yeah. It's like, the joke is to make fun of things, and it's like, oh, okay. Well, and even like the 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 ending. Oh my god, the ending. I um, am Iron Predator. Yeah. It's like there are so like okay. So speaking of Alien, there are so many versions of that ending that got shot. There's one where Ripley is in the pod with like a weird like breathing mask, so like you can't see a Sigourney Weaver. Uh, one where Newt is in the pod. Mm -hmm. One where Schwarzenegger is in the pod. And these apparently all got shot. And then the, then you get the Predator Killer armor one. Because they said, oh, well, the kids like Iron Man. <laughs> Clearly that's what you want is a fucking Predator <coughs> Iron Man suit. <laughs> well, again, you got to build that cinematic universe. Well, of course. And well, you have to start with Iron Man. <laughs> of course, naturally. So like yeah like and I appreciate a lot of the like the little things where they like tied in the other movies and like actually like reference Predator Two like and they like again Predators having Two didn't they like Predators Predators well. Two Predators as well yes um not particular no, they... no they didn't really reference Predators like the only thing that's like really like a reference is like they brought the concept of like the hunting dogs mm -hmm. back but then completely changed the design and in my opinion made them look silly yeah. And then um, the Super Predators also is kind of a concept, too. Mm -hmm. But again, they just made him a big, tall guy. Yeah. Whereas, like, I love in Predators... That the design of the... Yeah, like, again, the it's the comparison of, like, dogs and wolves, where it's mm -hmm. like, they're the they're bigger and meaner, and they got, like, these fucking... The face is similar, but also different. Exactly. It's very clear that they are two different, um, spe like, subspecies within the same, like, like, the Predator race and all that. And I like that idea. Like, it's a little less, uh, like, it, it, it makes sense that there would be different kind of factions and all that. And, yeah. I, and I like that concept. And, like, they, I guess they kind of tried to be a sequel to that, but not really. Mm. And it's like... Well, because, again, it was just, it looked like a roided up predator. Yeah. 100%. Like, just, ah, oh, he's bigger now. I want autism. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's like... That's a weird soundbite. It's like, why? <laughs> why would you do that, Shane Black? Yeah, it's uh, it's fine. I'm excited for the new one, though. Yeah. Like you worked on it. I did. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. Um, and we're just gonna leave it at that. Yeah. Um, but well, you signed an NDA. You can't say anything. I can't say anything. Um, but it like, oh man, it like, if it's it's such a cool concept, and I hope it it goes well. Like, does it have a release date yet or not even close? Not yet, no. Like, the most I know is it's going to be on Hulu and by proxy, hopefully Disney Plus. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. As we've seen in the past, sometimes that's not always the case. Yeah. I was here in 23. Like, from what I gather, it's supposed to be this year, but I feel like they might be doing a lot more post on it. Yeah. So, who's to say? But, like, I'm excited. It's very different from anything they've done before. So, which is good. 100%. Yes. Like, just give me. I'm not done, like, I'm not done with, uh, that's the big conception, it's like, oh, why can't they just do something original? It's just, like, I'm fine with them continuing franchises and, like, doing stuff, like, with these characters and all that, but just try to keep it fresh. Yeah, like, do something just, a little different. Just do something a little different, like, and, like, Predator plus different time period plus different warrior culture... You could do, like, five of those, and they would all be very different movies. You could also uh, revisit the gun, the 
and absolutely uh, you could do that in wouldn't, wouldn't that be interesting wouldn't that be a great um, idea it would be a great idea <laughs> is what is it pirate uh in the in the uh, comics it's a pirate yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so well, like, like and that's the thing is it's just really like i don't know i'm excited for because i don't i'm always excited when they do new projects within yeah. alien or predator because like there's, There's always, always a chance that it's going to be amazing. Yeah. And it feels like it's going to feel very much like the first Predator where this, this war is going to be completely di- outmatched. A little more down to... to yeah. rely on more intellect. 100%. Like, a little more back to basics kind of thing. And yeah. Like, just because that's the biggest thing with, like, the Predators. It just tried to overcomplicate things. And it's like, ah, the Predators want our planet because the global warming yeah. and stuff is so warm here now. Yeah, that was also a weird subplot. Yeah. was global warming. They've, they've, they've been... They've been purposely trying to make our planet warm ah they've been taking the spines and stuff because dna and things like i, I know dna it's like I, I i don't think they have i'm i'm gonna say they they haven't been doing that and they've just been trophies because they're a warrior culture anyway. and that's the thing is they, they changed the warrior culture into a r&d culture yes and yeah like it's it was a weird move well and i like I, I know, well, no, I, know we're co- weird... I know we're semi off topic now talking about it the Predator movies, but like it was a weird move because they're like, yeah, we're doing all this sciencey stuff, but we're also gonna send our meathead to come down and deal yeah. with you guys. Yeah, and it's like, well, why don't you send some like technology and stuff? well, because like, I love the doctor. <laughs> exactly send a doctor. Well, and that's like Doctor Predator. <laughs> it's a do- it is yeah, a predator. It's, he's got lab, lab coat it's spectacles. Like, it's like the gremlin. Yeah, the gremlin <laughs> comes to. The, uh, well, no, I'm here to test. You we're here to over. we're here to test the mantle of humanity. <laughs> we're gonna take your best DNA and mix it with our own. <laughs> this is. <laughs> I want that now. Well, it's like it's like uh, like with Klingons in Star Trek. It's like you only really ever see like the warriors of their race and all that. But like they have scientists. There's gotta be some dorks. Yeah, there are, and like they get bullied profusely because like, oh, you're a smart person. <laughs> like that's a like that's like a plot point. A couple of the episodes, like, and so I have to imagine, like, because the Predator is like they're they're simultaneously like. That's one of the things I find interesting about them is like they are this like spacefaring alien race that has figured out faster than light travel, cloaking technology, risk computers that are like that are also double as a nuclear bomb they could take out a city block, but also they'll just take your head off and put you on a stake and like do the whole warrior culture yeah. thing. It's like I find that fascinating. But yeah. here's a question for you Did they develop it or did they scavenge it? Depends on your version of the continuity. <laughs> Which one do you think is cooler? There's a part of me that loves the idea that, like, they were these, like... Because there's a version where it's like they were enslaved by this other smarter race. And then one day they just overthrew them and then just they took their technology. And that's kind of a cool idea where it's like these meatheads just, like... They just, like, took over one day and they said, Oh, we got these cool things now. <laughs> That's just... Uh, Village and plunder. Yeah, how does it work? I don't know. Push buttons. <laughs> Push buttons until beep, it works. Beep, 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 beep. I always, oh, I always no. thought it was so funny whenever they do like an insert of the like the thing and you see the big fingers. And it's like, like these tiny, yeah. these yeah. tiny <laughs> buttons. <laughs> the long nail where they have to push like... Yeah. Well, because clearly they have enough of understanding of how the technology works, but it's like... How how much are they like advancing that technology themselves yeah. to or, make it work better with their physiology? Exactly. So like I I it's kind of I feel like it's kind of a mix of both where it's like they kind of inherited some of the technology and they just slowly over time just because they wanted to kill better they got better at like making their own versions of it. So a little column A, a little column B. Like they, I find them as a as a creature fascinating in film and like they don't do quite enough with them. Predators was the last thing where I'm like, oh, that's a neat concept. That was a good concept. I, I enjoyed it. Where it's movie. like, oh, the hunting planet. Like, there's this race that doesn't really believe in, like, the honor of the hunt. They just, like, they just are trying to become better killers. And then there's, like, a war between the two factions. Mm-hmm. of like, like, that's a cool idea. And thematically with the story they're telling, it works perfectly. So I would have loved to follow up to that movie that made a decent amount of money and was mm-hmm. critically well received. Mm-hmm. But instead, we got the Predators. So... Which is fine. It's it's fine. Uh, anybody have a question of the day? It's a great. That is that is a great question. Ryan, do you have a question of the day? 
Here's being being the guest. Um, why don't you guys have a question and see if I can think of one? <laughs> well, we only ask one, and then we decided it fell in. Okay, it's your responsibility. Okay. Well, how well how about this? What's up? Since we like we kind of fell off of the uh, the alien a little bit, but like I I've like. <laughs> bomb, it's connected. Bomb. It's connected, but it's like I like that you were concerned that we wouldn't be able to talk about all the alien movies and we, in the time we frame did that it. we had. <laughs> we did and we it. also talked about Predator as well. <laughs> well, we got it figured. He was panicking this morning, something fierce. He's like, I just I don't, I don't know, know if we're gonna be able to cover it all. <laughs> all four major alien movies in an hour and a half. I don't know if we can do that. And we kind of yeah, we and, we did that and then some. It was great. If uh what do you think if you could take if you could take one movie, like any movie, and just throw the predator into it, why the predator? Why not the alien? Oh, well, okay, we'll do we'll do we'll do both. Let's uh, if you could take any movie and just throw the alien into it, what movie would you choose? Um, Alien, I would be the Muppets. Like I'm talking like Pigs in Space meets the Alien. A hundred and ten percent, I would do a Muppet version of Alien. Oh, no. <laughs> like, um, what Fozzie Bear gets face on? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, it would be just like, it would be... Oh, I do not feel so good. In... <laughs> <laughs> just stuffing. Stuffing everywhere. Yes. <laughs> Ruby, get out of there. <laughs> 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 um, and then for Predator, uh, Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy? Yeah. Like, uh, a, be, a noir be, detective movie That'd be fucking amazing. Predator. Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> oh my god. That's that's the perfect movie right there. Exactly. Like, uh, like basically take... Because that's kind of what Predator 2 was. Mm -hmm. But I really want that 1940s aesthetic. Yeah, that vibe. Like, that, give me some art deco Predator stuff. Yeah. Well, like, I, like, I always thought that, like... If give you, him a monocle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought, like, you put the Predator in, like, a World War II scenario would be really cool. That would be wicked. Yeah. That's, again, literally, take time period, add Predator, great movie. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like behind enemy lines. Yeah. Something like that. Like, Saving Predator Ryan. Yeah. Oh, my God. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> like, like, you put the Predator in, like, the Battle of the Bulge, like, that yeah. scenario. Like, that's a cool movie. Like, yeah, Enemy at the... Uh, you take, like, Enemy at the Gates, and you have, like... Uh, this like sniper survival yeah yeah like literally like ah it's so many again cool ideas it's a cool idea generator and you just throw it into a movie instantly compelling it's kind of the jeff goldblum question of like you know <laughs> you know take a movie and just add jeff goldblum and mm -hmm. it just gets better yeah it's the same thing with a predator like and an alien it's... absolutely um i would put the alien actually funny enough i put the alien in jurassic park <laughs> So you get, you get the Xenomorph Raptors, you get the Xenomorph T-Rex, you get... Specifically, John Hammond bought uh, an what? alien specimen bought from... Uh, from Wayland <laughs> He spared no expense. I spared no expense. <laughs> oh, yes, uh, the Xenomorph over there, it's like... Oh, alien that, dinosaurs. That's, that's not a dinosaur. <laughs> alien dinosaur. I imprint on all the newborn... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, that that's uh, uh, that's that's not normal. Um, it's, it's, that's chaos. <laughs> that that there. So see the, the alien jump in my face. That that's uh, <laughs> now. I'm gonna take some acid and drop it on my hand, and you're gonna see which way it's gonna draw. Oh, oh god! Oh, oh my hand! Oh, oh that that uh, that burns. Um, <laughs> that burns. That burns. <laughs> and uh, for the predator, I you said World War Two. I mean, I I did say that. It yeah, was a third answer. Obviously, I got a third. answer. Um, I just let me break out a list, and he pulls up like this. Scroll <laughs> and just actually, oh, god damn it, now I can't think of it at all. But like, yeah, like literally, like, like take a like something like Enemy at the Gates or like any of those World War Two movies. You throw the Predator into it, like I would, I'd dig the shit out of mm. that. It'd be so good. Put a Predator in a Batman movie. Uh, yes, <laughs> they. I mean, they literally they've done multiple comics. Yeah. <laughs> There's a source. It'd be so goddamn cool. Yeah. They've also had the Predator fight Judge Dredd as yeah. well. And it's also great. <laughs> yeah, that face. <laughs> it's it's the funniest thing, because, like, in the comic, he, like, 
Shred takes off like all his armor, so he's shirtless like Arnold, but he still has the helmet <laughs> on, and he fights him with a fucking knife. Safety I, first. <laughs> I had one of those comics when I was a kid, and my mom found out there was so much nudity. She <laughs> did not like it. The 2000, 2000 AD? Yeah. <laughs> yep, but like it's it's the funniest. Well, it kind of makes the predator an idiot though, because like he tries, he picks up Dred's gun and go tries to shoot him with it, yeah. and it just blows his hand up. It's like, yeah, <laughs> that's using your that's using your concept. And where'd you put the alien? In the Twilight movie, just kill all the cast. <laughs> <laughs> but then you have xenomorph vampires that sparkle everywhere. <laughs> you, oh, that's kind of terrifying. You that's... can't you can't shoot them. <laughs> I always saw like uh no imagine imagine like like take the concept of a uh, vampire versus the xenomorph mm-hmm. and the vampire tries to feed on a xenomorph mm-hmm. just like like that is a metal a metal image of just like a vampire's jaw burning yeah. off as it's tried to drain this alien creature i'm sure i'm sure that was a comic in the 90s somewhere I, someone had i'd to. have to i'd have to look that up but yeah 100%. but you're specifically targeting the uh the twilight, twilight. vampires yeah, yeah. Just to, well because well because like if they went after blade like blade would just fucking kill them all obviously yeah <laughs> blade could handle that shit blade versus the predator would be good yeah that's what i'm talking about you make the predator a vampire that's it that's interesting mm-hmm. you make the predator a werewolf I feel like Aliens and Predators versus, like, any superhero is just, like, a good pairing. There's a... You've seen it before. There's fucking... There's a... There's a... I think it... I can't remember if it's Alex Luthor or who does it, where it's, like, he makes, like, predator splice DNA versions of the Justice League. (laughs) So there's, like, Batman Predator, Superman Predator, Martian Manhunter Predator, and they fight the actual Justice League, but they're, like, in the costumes and everything, but it's just the fucking Predator. That's good. An alien in hot fuzz. Yeah, that's the one that's killing everyone. No luck catching those yeah. Xenos then. <laughs> Just, the Just the one, one actually. One, actually. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, and on that note, I think that concludes this delightful episode of a feast of films. Ryan, it's been great having you. Yeah, here. it's been fun. All Absolutely, right. it's been we'll a grand old again. time. I'll have to bring you back. You know where? I, you know where I have to find me. Exactly. <laughs> Where can the people, well, I guess, where can the people find you, social media-wise, if you... Instagram, you at God Made Me Funky. Awesome. Ethan, where... <laughs> I can't talk that's, that Instagram name. That's, that's it's the... just my name, Jeepers. Yeah, right? That's... No, Ryan went for the gold on that one. <laughs> it, it's not a lie, either. Like, that's, that's a, it's a bold claim, but it's the truth. <laughs> he did make me funky. He did. Yep. It's... And not just the smell. <laughs> 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 Where could the people find you, Ethan? You can find me at Ethan R. Hill on Instagram. You can find me, uh, Ethan R. Hill, on YouTube. And you can also find mine and Jesse's feature film, Damn Rights, at realhouse.org. Uh, buy it, rent it, stream it, download it. Support us, give us some money, because, you know. God knows you ain't need it. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> We're obviously. starving artists, darn it. Support my art. Um... Art. And what about you, Mr. Prosser? You can find me at that J Prosser on Instagram. You can find me on YouTube under Jesse Prosser as well. I got some short films on there, and then of course where Ethan mentioned our feature film, Damn Rights. Give it a buy. Give it a rent. All right. Yeah. All right. Goodbye, everybody, and yep. thanks again, Ryan. Thank you for coming Thank on you. the show, Ryan. It was a grand old time. Yeah. <laughs> bye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>